Welcome, this is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and on today's episode, Andrew and I have Q&A number 24. Andrew's got some questions that, between himself and many of you, he will ask me, and I will answer them, and everyone will rejoice. That's yep. a sort of a bad Monty Python joke, but... We'll just run with it. If you're new to the show, go check out whistlecake.com for all the things that we do because it's a lot more than this show. And if you like this show, go to whistlecakemartialartsradio.com for full show notes, including, but not limited to, transcripts, links, photos, videos, tags, uh, guests, social media, websites, all kinds of great stuff. We do two a week because we love traditional martial arts. We are here to connect, educate, and entertain along the way to getting everyone in the world to train for six months because we believe martial arts brings out the best in us. If you want to support our mission, consider joining our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick starts at two bucks a month. You can also buy something at the Whistlekick store using the code podcast15 or maybe share an episode. There are lots of things you can do. Appreciate all of your help. Let's do it, Andrew. All right. Cue me. So I've got four questions. Okay. And the first question is from uh, Chris Rickard. Okay. What class slash topic should instructor should instructors look into that they probably aren't? My my first reaction is their own development, their own development as martial artists, their own development as instructors. And I would say that their own development as instructors is a more common problem, which is why we started MAT, Martial Arts Teacher Training and Certification. Um, so I want to acknowledge that, but at the same time, there's a little bit of self-serving there. So I'm just going to mention it and move on. Uh, which, one more thing. First industry standard martial arts teacher training and with level two, an actual course that you got to pass or you're not level two. So yeah. But there are lots of ways to become a better instructor. And one of the things we're finding is that plenty of senior instructors have no problem sending their junior instructors. But we have all seen that everybody can get better. I don't care. Every single person who has come through this course has gotten dramatically better in eight hours. It has happened. There are people who were, I mean, there's one person, you, you know who it is, Andrew, and, and some of the folks listening will know who it is, had decades in the public schools still became a better teacher through the program. Was there as much headway, as much room for improvement for them as some others? No, but it was still worthwhile. They're still better. And I think a lot of instructors, by standing in the front of the room, have an assumption that they know what they're doing and they can improve. More and more, those folks are acknowledging that there's always room to improve their material, but what about room to improve how they convey that material to their students? If your job is to teach, and you do not want to become the best possible teacher you can be, I question your reasons for teaching. I dig it. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, yeah, I, I I can't imagine anyone not getting anything out of that that training. And, and you know, to, to that end, just bettering themselves in general will make them a better person. And, and I think that that is probably one of the number one things that often instructors don't do if they don't continue their own learning. Yeah. If, if you don't want to come to the, to the Matic courses, if you don't trust that it's going to be good, fine. If you're willing to acknowledge, I could probably become a better teacher, go to somebody else's martial arts school that you like and sit on the side and bring a notebook and a pen and just sit and observe. Notice the things that they do. Guess what? you might see some things you don't like. So make sure you're not doing them. It doesn't necessarily mean that the person you're observing is like the greatest teacher in the world. Just removing yourself from being part of the equation gives you the opportunity to observe in a way that you cannot observe. You cannot observe yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point, great point. Um, notebooks uh, reminds me of some of the stuff that we put together when we had our free training days, mm. you know, you could purchase a notebook, you know, that would have been one to get, uh, which you could purchase through our website, but there's a lot of other stuff you can purchase on our website as well. Oh uh, man. I to know a couple of, uh, new items that I think are going to be coming out. There, here. If this not one, already... this one I know is going to go live pretty much as is so I can show you. So we did a cool duffel bag, uh, 
a little over a year ago, and I was looking for a way to update it. And this is this is the new. It's short. It's smaller. Uh, somebody in in first cut called it an overnight bag, and it's a simple small bag, right? Perfect Coming for. Yeah, yeah, and I I've been surprised at how well the duffels have held up. This isn't going to be carrying more weight. It's going to be carrying less weight generally, and it's you know it's got pockets. Oh, I, I accidentally pressed the button. It's got a zip-in pocket. It's got carry handles. It's got a shoulder strap. It's got an outside pocket, right? You know, we're constantly looking at adding things. We're, we're, if you're not checking out whistlekick.com from time to time for the new products, you're missing out. So make sure that you're doing that and use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. Uh, by the time this episode comes out in the feed, that bag will be live. It is not currently live. Awesome. All right. Next question uh, is from Matt and or Jenny Nather. Okay. Because I'm not sure which which one sent it. Got it. Uh, I can tell you right from the question. Okay. Probably Jenny is my guess. (laughs) So the question is, what three words would you use to define yourself as a martial arts practitioner and why? Questions about me. Open. I don't think you have to describe why on that one. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Curious. Because I see those as, as, as different, right? Open is other people. You know, it's, it's push versus pull, right? Sure. Curious is me asking you. Open is you telling me. Yep, yep. Uh, open, curious. I'm trying to come up with an easy way to, to say it. Thankful. I'm appreciative of what I have and who I have and what I've learned from them. You know, uh, uh, martial arts is in some way every day of my life. Right? It doesn't mean I'm always training, but the people that I hang out with, I know through martial arts. The things that I do, I can do because of martial arts. I was thinking about something the other day, you know, um, I've been invited to go play some pickup baseball. You know, it's like, oh man, when was the last time I swung a bat? It's been a very long time. And it reminded me that a few years ago, a company I was doing some consulting with brought everybody out and we went to a driving range. I had never been to a driving range. I played mini golf. That was it. Um, I did fine. Uh, the only person that was hitting the ball better than me was someone who has played a fair amount of golf. Because I understand my body because of martial arts. I am not naturally athletically talented, but I know how to make my body work. And so after a couple swings with the club, I was like, okay, I understand how to do this. And I related it back to martial arts. And I hit the ball more often than not. And it went straight-ish more often than not. So I'm awesome. I'm thankful for how martial arts has threaded into absolutely every element of my life. Now, do you foresee swinging a golf club making its way into a year next thirty day challenge sort sort of thing that you we that whistle kicks been sponsoring and running? Um, no, I'm still working on all those challenges. Um, talk, talk about them a little okay. bit. Like, what, what, are we, what what's been co- what have people been working on, and what's coming up? So, what was the the most recent one? Was charge. We took the fuel program, which is an ongoing cardiovascular development program, and I turned it into a thirty day email sequence because we've got a bunch of those, and we've done I think six or seven of those this year. People have really enjoyed them, and. I, I don't know that that's necessarily the future, and we're certainly not going to make one every month for the rest of time. There's a point where it kind of tops out. But a lot of people can handle wrapping their head around something for a month. You know, and if you if you give me a month, like, you know, 10, 10, 15 minutes a day, I can give you some real progress on something. And that's what these programs have been. The next one that I, I'm going to do, and I, I'll be honest, I don't know when this is going to come out, but the next one that I want to do is 30 one-day challenges a variety of challenges. Like I'm going to challenge your balance. 
I'm going to challenge your strength. I'm going to try your breathing and it'll be different every day. And the hope is you'll find some that you're really good at. Keep doing what you're doing. You'll find some you really aren't good at. There's a hole in your training. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's a really great idea. I love it. Thanks. Uh, and these these thirty day challenges, they're like you know, to, if you want to sign up and do them, they cost like five hundred bucks, right? Yeah, five thousand dollars. No, they're uh, most of them are in the thirty dollar range. Most of them are about a buck a day, and that's before you yeah, use your discount very code. Reasonable. Yeah, very reasonable for sure. Yeah, the, awesome. All right, and and for, just as, as one more thing to tack on, how do I know we've done a good job with them? Because most of the people who do one do another. That's how I judge success when people yeah, come back. That makes sense. All right. Ready for question number three? Ready. This one is from a listener of the show. I had to go back. I had was looking for questions, and I realized that I had had one in my email that had been sitting there for a long time. Oh, no. So uh, I apologize if this listener, Michael Tucker, has been waiting and waiting and waiting to hear this question get asked and answered. But So here it is. What is your advice on the best way to deal with the mental and physical stress in preparing for a black belt rank testing and promotion? Mm -hmm. Advice on the best way to deal with mental and physical stress. Scale the mental stress into physical preparation. Mm -hmm. That is the Same best way. thing that you can do. So if you're feeling stressed about the test, it's because you want to do a good job and you are concerned that where you are is not where the standard should be, where you should be, right? You're shooting yourself. So if you're stressed, go practice, go run, go lift weights, go do your forms, go shadow box. That's gonna do two things. It's gonna make you more prepared and it's going to help you feel better mentally because you're moving, moving around, you're, you're making some progress. Uh, one of the programs on the list, you know, to kind of throw back to the last thing that we talked about, I want to do a program that people can kind of fill in where they're lacking and prepare for a rank test. But there's a lot of complexity in there, very, depending on how much time people have to prepare, right? Some people know a year in advance. Some people know a month in advance. And so I haven't quite figured out how I want to attack that problem yet. But if somebody came to me and they said, I've got X amount of time, what am I generally doing? What are the things that you need the most work on? Those should be your priorities. The things you need the least work on are the things you spend the, should spend the least time on and put it in that kind of reverse order. Another thing you can do, and this is, I've seen this happen pretty much across the board with black belt tests. It's more about your spirit than any kind of objective standard. Some schools do have objective standards. You need to be able to run a mile in this time or do this other, you know, this many push-ups. Well, make sure you can do that. But beyond those objective standards, it's about heart. How are you showing up for the test? And here's the thing that nobody re is really gonna tell you. If you're prepared at level 10 or level 50, they're gonna want to see you at 11 or 51. They're going to wanna push you. So there is something to be said for making sure you have a good foundation of where you are, but pushing it and further, further, further at the sacrifice of the rest of your life for some incredibly long period of time and stressing out over it is probably not going to serve you. You can over prepare yeah. for a black belt test in many cases. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to well, add? You've been through it. No, I, I liked that. The I hadn't thought of the just by continuing to train, it gets your mind off of the the other stuff mm. uh i get that I, i'm also a fan of uh focus it, like uh sitting down and mentally focusing on yourself and for me it's my breathing mm. right when i just if i'm getting really stressed sometimes i can just sit and just focus on close my eyes and focus on nothing but my breathing and and work towards not thinking of anything else and if I'm starting to feel myself get ramped up, I can just use that to just, okay. Like, it, you know, that's for mm -hmm. me, that's what, that's what works. But I, I also like the concept of, you know, put that stress of the mental stuff into the physical. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's good. Um, 
we before I ask question number four, um, we had talked a little bit earlier about you know the uh, learning from you know notebooks and you know writing stuff down and stuff like that. Um, you know, one of the ways that people can also get more out of that sort of stuff is being involved in a mastermind mm. and being able to talk to other school owners about what they're doing and what you're doing and how they did. And it really becomes kind of a everybody helping everybody. And Whistlekick has a school owner's mastermind yep. that is open to individuals that support us through our Patreon. Yeah, the, the, the upper tiers of the Patreon give people the option of joining a mastermind that is exclusively for school owners who contribute to the Patreon. So right there, you know that they own a school and that they love Whistlekick. So between those two, you end up somewhat like-minded. And the more time I spend working with clients, whether these are martial arts schools or not, the realization that mutual support, recognizing that you are not alone is one of the most important things in running a business. Uh, yeah. For probably a third of the clients that I work with, my primary job is making them feel seen and heard because it can be very, very lonely doing that sort of work. I know what it's like to, I know what it's like to own a business. Most of the time it is not fun. Sometimes it is fun. Hopefully it pays off, but it's not the easiest way to go through life. And if you're really, really invested in teaching martial arts, you're probably gonna end up owning a school at some point. That's okay, that's great. I wanna support you in that. But I also want to give you tools for mutual support, self-support, and the mastermind. You know, I see people, I, I facilitate it, but most of the great information comes from from the sharing across from the others. We do it on Zoom, and people are jotting notes fast and furious for the whole hour. Yeah, and you can get involved with Patreon for as little as two dollars a month. Two dollars. You're not going to get to the mastermind at two dollars, but two dollars you get to know who's coming up on the show, and and we make it easy. You can look at those tiers, patreon.com slash whistle. All right. Last question. We're going to wrap things up here pretty quick. This last question is from Chris Rickard. We started and ended the show with his question. Mr. Bookend. This is kind of a, this is kind of a fun one. I like it. If you, are you familiar with the Highlander series of movies? I am familiar. I can't tell you the last time I watched any of them. Okay. That's fine. If you were one of the immortals in the Highlander universe, which style of sword would you favor and why? Um, the only, I, I, I assume the sword styles parallel what I might know of actual sword styles? Yeah, they're actual okay. swords. Um, my instinct is going to be for a shorter Japanese style sword, because that's what I have the most time with. I've found in working with swords that I don't like really long swords, that I find them difficult to swing, and I don't like them in terms of in close work. You know, if somebody's six feet away from me, I, I'm not as threatened by them, and so I don't need a sword that is that long. I think there's, uh, if, if we're talking about that distance, I'd rather have a spear. But something like a, um, trying to think of how big the sword I have at home is, probably a 28 to 32 inch blade. And that's that's kind of where I'm at. I think that's technically too short to be called a katana, but swords are not my area of expertise. But a little bit, but a little bit longer than a wakazashi. I guess I think so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I would be right around the same. Like I wouldn't want to be any bigger than a katana, uh, and I would choose that because that is what I have the yeah. most use with right yeah. now. So. Yeah. Go with what you know. All right, that brings us to the conclusion of our rapid fire Q&A number 24. 24. Uh, thanks for putting this together, Andrew. And thank you to all of you who submitted questions. Don't be afraid to submit more questions to Andrew. Most of you, many of you have access to him, direct access to him, but uh, you can email him, Andrew at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. You can find him on social media. If you can't find those things, email me, Jeremy at WhistlekickCom. Don't send me the question. Just email me and I'll put you in touch with Andrew because I don't know these going, going into it. And that's kind of what makes it fun for me. If you want to support us, Patreon, Podcast 15 in the store, tell people about the show, subscribe, notifications, all that good stuff. Thank you.
I appreciate you. Appreciate all of you. Until next time, train hard, smile, train hard, and smile, have a great day. Have a great day.